This is the inside of the Swift Kentucky 625. If we firstly come to the main control panel, you can see that currently the 12 volt is turned off. If we now press here, we can turn the 12 volt system on. You can see that it's letting us know that we're using the leisure battery. This sun will appear just here to let you know that the solar panel is active. This lightning strike is letting us know that we have main supply. We have the time, condition of the battery, how much water is in the fresh tank, and on this side here, how much water is in the waste tank. Down this side here, we have lights. So we have awning light on and off. We then have the dimmable lighting on and off. And then we have all other lighting on and off just here. These can all be done individually on their own switches. Water pump on, water pump off just here. Water pump needs to be on to be able to get water out of the taps, flush the toilet and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. All other information is then given via scrolling on the arrows just here. So if I begin to scroll through, we'll go back to the beginning. So this is a Sargent EC620 control panel. If you are going to use the Swift command system, you need to make sure that you've downloaded the app. And if you want to use the tracking system, etc., which is a paid subscription, you will need a certain number. And you get to this by scrolling in here. So ignore software and ignore comms. And then we press the button again and you get a unique M number, which you will need to give to Swift. After that, we have system settings. If I now arrow in again, we can set the time just here. Anything you want to change, just arrow in. We have Bluetooth delete, so if you want to delete any device that you've had connected up to the Swift command system, you can do it here. We then have Bluetooth pair. Again, just press the arrow, it will send out the Bluetooth signal and then you can connect up. Water tank alarms on or off. How long before these blue LEDs go out when you're not using the control panel? And how long before this backlight goes out? Key beeps on or off. And then set your year, set your month, etc. just there. and then just exit the settings. After system settings, we then have heater settings. So at the moment they're set in manual, so they will just be controlled via the Aldi control panel just here. If you want to control it via the Swift command app, just go in until you find app. And then we exit out of that one. After heater settings, we can have dimmer level for the dimmable lights. And again, just arrow in. We can dim them down, brighten them up, etc. Internal temperature. These systems now all come with an AC limiter. So you'll see at the moment we're just having the lights on, etc. We are just using 2.9. 2.8 amps. If you know how many amps the site is that you're on, you can arrow in and pick and then it will limit you. So if you turn something on and you're going to exceed your limit, it just will not work. This will go right the way up to a 16 amp site. After that, we have tank heaters on or off. Select your battery. So at the moment we're using the leisure. I can then flick and I can actually run the back end off the vehicle battery if required. Solar, so this lets you know what the solar panel's up to. As you can see, it just keeps flicking, it's just topping up the vehicle battery at the moment. It will let you know when it's active. 
letting you know the condition of the vehicle battery and the leisure battery and then back to the beginning again. If we now move across to the Aldi control panel for the heating and hot water, we turn it on just here. Up here it's letting us know that we are hooked up to main supply. It's also giving us a temperature of the motorhome. I always go by what this one says, not so much what this one says. I believe that they only wire up one of these control panels to the internal thermostat. If we now press menu, it will then bring up the main functions just here. So the top one here is for your heating, just literally plus and minus whichever temperature you want inside the motorhome. Just in this corner here, this is the circulation pump symbol. So this just lets you know that the fluid is now traveling around the heating system. Beneath the heating, we then have hot water. So hot water is currently off, hot water on, hot water on boost. The boost facility is extremely handy. If there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other, if you do perform the boost and the heating's running, it will turn it off as it needs to use that extra power. And then after I believe it's 30 minutes, it would then automatically drop back down again. At the moment, I've selected 22.5 and I've turned the hot water on, but actually the system hasn't fired up yet because we haven't given it a power source. So if we want to run it on main supply, we have the little picture of the lightning strike just here. And we can run it on one kilowatt, two kilowatts, or three kilowatts, just dependent on the amperage of the site you're on. If we don't have main supply, we can run on gas by highlighting the little picture of the flame. And what we can also do if we have both power sources available to us, we could run it in dual fuel. This will get us up to temperature nice and quickly. If there's a problem in any shape or form, for, for argument's sake, the gas isn't turned on or it's depleted, you may get a notification on here letting you know and it will just say gas failure. We then have the main settings menu just here. So we have night mode just here. So this is the night timer on and off just up the top here. Select the temperature you would like it to be for that time period and then select when you would like night mode to start, whether it's for all days of the week or just individual, and when you would like night mode to end. We can also invert the backlight just here, so this white screen goes to black and the writing goes to white. And we can also have it so the boiler does not produce any hot water in that period, especially handy um, if you're wild camping so it's not wasting gas heating water when you're asleep. Next we have the day mode, so exactly the same again, but just for the daytime. Prioritizes what the system prioritizes in using when in dual fuel mode. So at the moment it favors main supply over gas, so it will only use the gas as it's required. If you are on an extremely low amp site, you could flip it on its head so it consumes more gas, less electric. This one here is just the brightness etc of the backlight. This one is not used on this particular model. If you're going to be using timers etc it helps if the time and the date is all correct. If we now arrow down. This is a bit more redundant now because on this one we already have the, we just bring it back up again. We have the AC limiter just here. This is also a amp limiter, but you only really need to run one, and I would suggest running this one over this. This one here is called antimicrobial. What you can do is sanitize the boiler. Just put this one on. You do need to be running night mode as well, and then what will happen is at about two, three o'clock in the morning, it will fire itself up heat up rapidly to kill off any bacteria that may be in the system. This one here is just your thermostat offset so if you don't think it's quite correct you can just slightly tweak it. 
high altitude mode, as it says down here, if you are using the motorhome above a thousand meters above sea level, you can pop this on. Key beeps on and off. Instead of having multiple timers, you can just have one start and stop to the system just there. This one here is just for the circulation pump for the heating system. Just have it set to thermal. Full factory reset. External start you don't need to worry about because this doesn't need any extra software um, because it can be run through the Swift Command app. Language service, again more for the workshop, but you can bring it up and see what temperatures everything is at. Installed accessories, there isn't really anything in here that you really need. Everything is already active. And then we just go round and round in a big giant circle again. If we now come down to the bench seat just here and we remove the cushions, we can then lift up. And then we can see in here the drain point for the fresh water tank. It is just a matter of turning like so to drain it down. Also in here you will find a switch. This switch here controls the fans that can take off some of the heat from the heating system and then blow it out through the little vents thus throwing some warm air into the cab area on top of it you can just see one of the bleed nipples for the Aldi heating system if we now close this back up again and replace the cushions Underneath the other bench seat we just have storage and then tucked down here you can see three pin socket and this is the switch for the other fan that blows warm air from the heating system just here. If we now move into the overhead locker just here we will find the consumer unit. So we have the trip switches just here, so we have the three individual MCBs, the main RCD and test button just here. They are numbered up and correspond on the sticker just here. Beside that we then have the 12 volt fuses and again they are all numbered up and correspond on this part of the sticker. Along the top we then have isolator switches for components that use main supply. So we have this amber one just here for the Aldi heating and hot water system. If I turn this off here it just will not work on the control panel up here on main supply. So it can be left on, it's more for maintenance than anything else. We then have the green one just here which is for the battery charger. We want this on because we want to be able to charge both leisure and vehicle when we're hooked up to the main supply. This one here is not a button. It will just illuminate if you have reverse polarity connected to the motorhome. You may find this on some continental sites. We also have full system shutdown just here so if you are not using the motorhome for long periods of time especially in the winter months you can turn this off just here and it will kill, kill any residual draw on the leisure battery if you do this it will take out the solar panel as well next we have the Dometic fridge freezer So on and off just here, this is an automatic model so as long as you are on A for auto it will find the best power source it can for you. So because we're hooked up to main supply at the moment it's put us onto mains with a little picture of the two pin plug. If I now ran outside and pulled the mains lead out it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas 
and as soon as we start the engine it will then put itself over to 12 volt maintain to keep itself cold whilst on the move. We can take it out of auto if we want, so if I want to put it on gas now I can select the little picture of the flame. If I want it on 12 volt maintain I can put it onto this one here. We're going to get a beeping sound and a red flashing light just here because we currently haven't got the engine on. We will also get this noise if it, for argument's sake, fails to light on gas. If you think it may just be down to the fact there might be some air in the system, you can press this button here and it will then attempt to light itself again. This one here is the unit's anti-condensation jacket on and off. The condensation jacket needs to be on in the warmer summer months. This just stops a build-up of condensation behind the unit, which would then result in a puddle forming underneath it. It does not need to be on in the colder winter months. Temperature control just here. Both freezer compartment and fridge compartment have venting points. Just push and slide towards you. This will then allow the doors to hold on a jar. Beneath the fridge you will find storage and you will also find storage above it. Also in here we have the television aerial. We have the Digital amplifier just here, on and off, just at the top. Control the boost just here. The aerial mast is located just here. To raise the mast, undo the collar and then push up and get into the position that you require and then lock into place. Never over tighten these collars because you can split them. This green section here indicates the back of the aerial so we know which way it's pointing. You'll see it's in H for the horizontal position at the moment. What we can do is turn the tail and flip it to the vertical position if it requires any more tuning. Do make sure that the aerial is back down again for travel. Light switch is just here and then we also have the habitation door step in and out. The location of the boiler is just in the cupboard just here. So above it we have storage racks. Remove the front cover just here and then we can see the Aldi boiler just here. The drain valve for it is located just here on the yellow lever to drain the boiler down for winterization. Make sure the water pump is turned off and then just put it into the vertical position like so. When fully draining for winter I always suggest that you open up the taps inside the motorhome as well. This will help in releasing any airlocks in the system and help in draining off. When it comes to refilling the motorhome back up again, make sure the valve is flapped over again as it is at the moment, fill up the fresh water tank, turn the water pump on and the system will begin to prime itself. You will need to open all the taps, they'll cough, they'll splutter, wait until they're flowing freely on hot and cold and then close and then the system will fully reprime itself. Beside the boiler we have some of the gas isolation taps just here. They are colour coded and match on the sticker just here. Again they're all in the on position and I always say they can stay like that. They are more for maintenance than anything else. Um, I would say if you smell gas, go to the gas locker and turn the bottle off.
we have the hob just here so we have the electric hot plate that works off the main supply red light comes on to let you know it's in operation everything else is gas and it's literally just push in twist and push the igniter with this particular hob cover as soon as it goes down it will automatically cut the gas out beneath it we then have the grill and that's the same again just push in and then hit the igniter and the oven beneath that with the oven you do not need to press the igniter as soon as you push it in it will start to ignite you do have an inspection light just here beneath it storage again and you will also find a plug this is for the hot plate above this we then have the microwave again this will work on main supply we have quick start just here and stop and then we have all the normal stuff power settings defrost etc just here beside it in the cupboard we have where the microwave is plugged in and we also have the solar panel regulator just here extractor fan just here so we have both lights on and off and then we have fan on and off if we now come into the washroom we have the cassette toilet just here so to open to the cassette just slide the grey lever across push the flush on the blue button level indicator just here so this will illuminate when the cassette needs emptying close the cassette back up again if this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside it will not come out we have the basin just here and then the shower cubicle do make sure that the shower screen is on the travel catch when the vehicle is in motion bed at the back storage beneath it and we have the freestanding table just here and the leisure battery is located just here the header tank for the Aldi heating system is just located in this wardrobe you can see a level just here do make sure it's between the minimum and the maximum do not take your reading until the heating system is up to temperature also make sure that the vehicle is level it's currently not level at the moment so it's given me a false reading if it does need topping up you can do this yourself by removing the cap just here do make sure that you are using proper Aldi top up solution if you are going to do this yourself And then we have storage above the bed and the other wardrobe just here. Located in the floor just here is a hatch that will enable you to gain access 
to the top of the fresh water tank so if you want to add any cleaning tablets to it you can do so just here the front bed is extremely easy to make just lift up and slide out drop the leg and then do exactly the same on the other side and drop down and then literally slide your cushions into place you will find that once the cushions are in place that you do get a small gap and that's what this little grey infill is for just here.